Welcome back. We are in Chapter 7 on Subtraction, and today we cover Subtraction Algorithms. We'll look at five algorithms, and we'll use the same subtraction problem with each one of these algorithms. Let's give them a try. The first algorithm is our standard right-to-left algorithm, and so 932 minus 356 I start at the right, 2 minus 6, oh, I can't do 2 minus 6, so I go to the 3, change that into a 2, borrow the 1, 12 minus 6 is 6, I try 2 minus 5, I can't do that, so I change the 9 into an 8, borrow 1 to make that 12, 12 minus 5 is 7, 8 minus 3, now I can successfully do 8 minus 3, and I get my final answer, 576. I won't spend too much time on that. Hopefully that is familiar to you. Let's move on to our second subtraction algorithm. This is the trade first algorithm. So same problem as before, 932 minus 356. But now I do all of my trading first. I see that 2 is less than 6, so I'll need to change the 2 into a 12. So the 3 becomes a 2. I carry the 1 over there. Now, 2 minus, I don't do the subtraction, 12 minus 6 yet. Now I look at 2 minus 5. Uh, 5 is bigger, I can't do that, so I'll need to take that 9, turn it into an 8, bring the 1 over. Now I've done all of my trading, so now let's do the subtraction. 12 minus 6 is 6. 12 minus 5 is 7. 8 minus 3 is 5. So trade first is very similar to the standard algorithm, but it's just an interesting insight that we could do all of our trading first before doing any subtraction. In the standard algorithm, I do trade, subtract, trade, subtract, trade, subtract, trade, subtract. And in the trade first, I do trade, 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 and then all of my subtractions. It's just nice that it doesn't matter. Either way you want to do it is fine. Number three, counting up. In this algorithm, I will write down the big number, 932, and just put it off to the side and keep thinking about that for a little bit. Then I'll write 356, and I need to add up to my 932. So let's add some things that will eventually get me there. I want to somehow turn these rightmost digits into zeros, so I'll start by adding 4, and that gives me 360. Then, so 360, now I want to change this 6 into a 0, so I will add 40. So plus 40 gives me 400. So as I'm adding up, I'm getting closer to my target number. 400, what should I do now? Maybe I'll add 500. So plus 500, and that gives me uh, 900. Well, I'm getting closer, and now it's easy to see. If I want to get 932, I should add... 32. And when I add 32, I get 932, which is my target. I've added everything I need to add to get up to 932. So here we go. How much did I add altogether? Let's just add all of those things. 4 plus 2 is 6. 4 plus 3 is 7. 5. And I get 576. Hey, look at that. It's the, it's the answer. This is kind of a cool idea that I can do a subtraction problem only using addition. Which subtraction model is closely related to the counting up algorithm? So I would say it's the missing addend. In the missing addend problem, we sort of think to ourselves 356 plus something is 932. And so I add up appropriately to get to my target number left to right. 932 minus 356. Let's start on the left. How about 9 minus 3? 9 minus 3 is 6. 3 minus 5. Oh, 3 minus 5 I can't do, so I'll have to borrow, but now I'm going to do it from the 6 and change that into 5, and I have a 1. So now 13 minus 5 is 8. 2 minus 6, oh, I can't do 2 minus 6, so I'll change the 8 into a 7, 
bring a 1 over, now I can do 12 minus 6, and that gives me 6. And there's our answer, 576. I really like this method a lot. If I could magically wave a wand and change the standard method into left to right, I would do this because it gives us successively better estimates of the answer as we go. If I had just stopped as soon as I got the 6, I would have known that my answer was approximately 600. And then after I kept going, once I had the 5 and the 8, I'd have known that my answer was close to 580. And then finally going all the way, we get the final answer, 576. I really like this method. I tend to use it occasionally if I'm subtracting some numbers. I like the idea that it gives me estimates as I go. Last one, the same change algorithm. 932 minus 356. And the idea here is that I'm going to change the problem until I get an easy problem. And I want to modify the number on the bottom so that it ends in zeros. So to start, maybe I'll add 4. So plus 4, plus 4. It's the same change, so I'll add the same number to both. And I get 9. 36 and 360. Well, maybe I still don't quite know how to do this, so I want to change that 6 into a 0. I'll add 40 to both the top and the bottom. So this gives me 976 and 400. But now this is a problem I can do. 6, 7, 5, and my answer is 576. See the similarity to the opposite change algorithm that we had for addition. With addition, we had something like uh, 92 and 55, and if I wanted to add them together, I would do an opposite change. So maybe subtract 2 and add 2, uh, 90 and 57. And when you get to a problem, when you get to a point like this, then you can just add them together. There is a difference. With adding, I could make the top number simple, or I could make the bottom number simple. It really didn't matter. In the, in the subtraction problem, in the same change, it's this bottom number that I really want to simplify to have all the zeros. That's what's going to make my subtraction easy. That is it for the five subtraction algorithms. Let me end with a couple thoughts. The standard method isn't the only one. There's five different ways that we can think about subtraction. But when teaching subtraction, we need to balance the need for results with the desire to demonstrate different points of view. It is great to have these five different points of view, five different ways of thinking about subtraction, tearing it apart, looking at how numbers behave. But at the end of the day, if you're given two numbers, you don't want to be paralyzed by thinking, which method should I use? They're all good, but <laughs> settle on something. Uh, as a society, we have sort of settled on right to left as our cultural standard of doing it. And like I said, if I could wave a magic wand, maybe I would say, let's make left to right the standard method. But pick something that works for you to, uh, to make your standard method. All right, that's all I have to say for today. Give the homework problems a try and ask as you have questions.